Georgia Tech has fired Jeff Collins, their head coach, and of course the AD Todd Stansberry. And this is this one was not unexpected at all. Everybody knew what was going to happen here. Uh, the fact that they did it as early as they did was a little surprising. And the only reason why it was surprising is what what do you gain at this point? Because you could have now Brent Key is he was the offensive line coach. He is going to be uh, the interim coach. But this early firing situation, I mean, it's this is three straight weeks. Scott Frost at Nebraska uh, after week two. And then you had, after week three, Herm Edwards at Arizona State. Now, that one, of course, could have been NCAA-induced, but the fact that you did it after losing to Eastern Michigan, that's kind of a problem. Uh, and then Jeff Collins losing a, a hard-fought game to UCF. I mean, it was 27-10. to 10. That was definitely a better showing than he put up against Ole Miss at home the week prior. This one was on the road. What is the timing? And it appears to me that George Deck does not exactly have their ducks in a row, right? Uh, they've got lists of candidates, and we're going to go over some of those candidates here in just a minute. But I think one of the biggest issues that you're running into is you don't have anybody necessarily in charge. So anybody that's going to come in here is going to want to know who their boss is uh, for the most part. I mean, this is not an Auburn situation, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. But you got to get that situation handled first, and then you got to figure out who is the best fit for this job. So... Let's dive through some of the candidates, and I'm not going to have anything on the screen for this one, uh, but we're going to go through The Athletic and ESPN both put out lists of different candidates that they believe would fit this job, that would work at Georgia Tech, etc. And so I'm going to talk about whether or not they would fit or whether or not they would not. You know, who works in Atlanta at a uh, an institution that really, really values the academic side, Right. So let's uh, let's take a look. They bring up Deion Sanders. I don't think that works in any way. Yes, obviously he had uh, a professional career in Atlanta. Yes, it might work from a recruiting standpoint a little bit. I don't believe they're going to give him everything that he wants. If Deion Sanders is going to take an FBS job, it's going to be somewhere where he has control, where he understands, uh, or where he has the best chance to bring in the biggest recruits. And that's not going to be at Georgia Tech. It's not Northwestern, it's not Stanford, it's not Vanderbilt, etc. They don't, the standards are not the same. So while you could have a few that you could let into school uh, with lower academic standards, you're not going to have an entire class full. So yeah, it's going to be a little more difficult to recruit to to Georgia Tech. So I don't think Deion Sanders is going to work there. Uh, Todd Munkin is a name that's been brought up. He is Georgia's offensive coordinator. Unless he just is dying to be a head coach. And if he is, I think there's other opportunities. I don't see any reason why he goes uh, just a little across the state, not even across the state, I mean, just right out his back door, and goes and takes over a program that would have to play Kirby Smart's machine every single year when Munkin is making, I believe, $2 $2 million, if not close to it, to be the offensive coordinator of an absolute juggernaut. Like, you're talking about a national title contender. Why would Munkin take the job? If you don't have a good answer for why Munkin would take it other than, oh, well, he just wants to be a head coach. Well, okay. We still don't have a good answer. And if, he's, if he wants to be a head coach, there will be other opportunities for him elsewhere where he has a chance to be more successful. So, uh, Del McGee is the Georgia running backs coach. If it gets to that level, yes, I think I think McGee would take it, and I think he'd be good at it because I think he can recruit. Uh, it, I think it's it would be incredibly important um, at Georgia Tech to get somebody that understands the landscape, that understands Atlanta, and I think McGee does that. Uh, Bill O'Brien, I mean, he is getting the push. If you listen to Split Zone Duo, uh, CAA reps him, and they've got him in the list for every single job that is out there right now, all of them. I mean, it's just insane when you think about it. Uh, but he he's going to be up for all these jobs. And yeah, what he did at Penn State was impressive. And what he did at Houston when he wasn't the GM was incredibly impressive. Uh, but that one's a tough one to sell. Like, I've, it, It's not super tough to sell. Obviously, he comes in as OC. Alabama loses a bunch of uh, star wide receivers, etc. And in his first year with a rebuilt roster, 
he helps develop Bryce Young and win him the Heisman Trophy. Now, I think that has more to do with Bryce Young, but, yeah, if he wants to take the job, yeah, I guess I could see it working. I mean, there's a way it could work. I think he's more interested in NFL opportunities, but uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's soured on the NFL. If he wants to recruit and whatnot, uh, this would be a place where you should be able to do that. But we'll see. We will see. Uh, Jamie Chadwell, Coastal Carolina head coach. Uh, here is the tricky part about this. Georgia Tech knows that the triple option worked for them under Paul Johnson. Uh, they didn't have to have fantastic recruiting classes, etc. Uh, there was there was definitely a ceiling. There was no national championship coming for them. And I don't know that there's anybody that they could hire that would bring them a national championship. With Jamie Chadwell, you would have a fun, exciting brand of offense. But I, I think it hinges on who is going to be the quarterback. You have to have a quarterback that understands and fits perfectly into that system. At Coastal Carolina... With Jamie Chadwell as the OC, even when he was uh, when he was the OC, I'm repeating myself, uh, they they did not look like this. They didn't look like this. They have only looked like this with Grayson McCall, and he will likely be in the NFL next year. So, uh, do you take that risk? Yes, the offense is incredibly fun. Yes, I think that Chadwell could be an incredibly successful head coach, but again. There are questions there. Of course, there's uh, the NCAA stuff in his background. I don't know that that necessarily matters as much now, but what kind of value does Georgia Tech put on something like that? Just a question. Uh, Moving along, Dan Mullen already lives in Atlanta, uh, was at Florida. His record speaks for itself. Obviously, at Florida, it ended poorly, but he was still a successful coach there. He just lost the team. Like, he, he lost them badly. And, and mismanage the roster. I mean, all kinds of problems. He's not going to recruit a, a lot of players, right? He's not going to recruit a lot of studs. But when he was at Mississippi State, which has uh, definitely not similar academic restrictions, but just restrictions overall, uh, he was successful. Now, that's where it gets tricky is he could find guys that likely couldn't get into Georgia Tech and find a way to develop them at Mississippi State. I wonder what he can do at Georgia Tech with guys that can get in anywhere, but maybe you're not as uh, athletic, et cetera. So that's, it's it's weird. I don't know that it would work, uh, but it's not like Mullen's a bad coach. So it wouldn't, uh, I don't think it'd be a bad hire. Bronco Mendenhall was brought up. I don't think that he wants to get back into coaching this quick. Now, I could be wrong, but... When it, the way that he left Virginia just seemed like he's kind of done with this for a little while. I don't think he's interested in coming back. So I don't think that one's going to work. Uh, Tom Herman brought up, former Texas head coach, of course. He is looking to get back into college football. He's been brought up for the Arizona State job. I, I am curious. Like, I think that he could find a way to make it work in Atlanta. Uh, again, Herman, not a bad head coach. Like, not a bad head coach at all. Like, I, I don't know that anybody is going to be able to win big at Texas uh, until you get everybody aligned. He just wasn't able to align everybody. Now, that does lead to questions about Georgia Tech. Are they completely aligned? I don't know. Um, Is there a coach on this list that could align everybody? And I don't know. Like We thought that Jeff Collins was that, uh, but that did not work. Jeff Lebby, of course, the Oklahoma offensive coordinator, former Ole Miss offensive coordinator, and the UCF offensive coordinator. you see what Heupel has done at Tennessee. Could Levy do the same thing at Georgia Tech? Possibly. Um, but, of course, Levy being associated with uh, with Art Bryles, that could make it tricky. You have to wonder about these institutions that, uh, that have a lot of pride, etc. Are they going to be willing to do something along those lines? It's, it's, it's still a valid question all these years later. Uh, you know, with what happened at Baylor and whatnot. But I, I do think that Levy could be very successful. Uh, his offense would work in spades in the ACC. Uh, along with that, uh, hey, you know, we don't have to hit on anybody else. I mean, if I had to guess on anybody at this exact moment, uh, oh, oh, Matt Rule was one that was brought up. If Matt Rule's coming back to college football, I, I don't believe that Georgia Tech is where he's going to go. 
Like, it might fit into what he has done in the past working at Temple and Baylor, uh, and I have no doubt that he would be successful there. But if he's coming back to college football, I I think it is much more likely that he takes a Nebraska or just a massive job that has not come open yet. Like, that's, that's where I see him. I don't see him fitting here. If I had to make a guess, uh, I... You know what? I'm not going to make a guess right now. I have no idea. Like, I, I I would love to see Jamie Chadwell get the job. I think he'd be great at it. But uh, there are, you know, some questions. There are some things to get around there that could make it uh, interesting. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.